Okay, so you clicked on the thumbnail, which makes me believe that you want to learn how to make a chart like this. First of all, it took me roughly five hours to produce this chart because there were so many functions I haven't used before that were totally new to me. But the good news is that I now have a GitHub account and you can find the R code that creates this chart in the description below. The main points I want to focus on are how to create the basic donut chart, which is this one. And you can see you won't actually need that much code to produce it and that will later be in the middle of the plot. Then I will show you how to read images from the internet and put them into ggplot. And at the end I'll show you how you use the patchwork library to put multiple plots together with a specific design in mind. You can download the CSV file and the R code and the PNG or produce it by yourself. So what I do first, I remove all the objects I have in my R session and then with the easy package library you can load multiple packages in one line of code by simply naming them. And then I set the working directory to the location where the R file currently is, which means the raw data is also in the same location. And then with the read the limb function from the reader package, I read in the CSV with a semicolon as separator or deliminator. This is the raw data. It has an infra class, a super order, and then a specific order with the number of species that fall within this order. So rodents in Rodentia have 2,552 species. There are 518 species of primates. And some of these orders have only one species that's still alive. For the Tubulidentata is actually the artwork, which is this cute little creature. Now I do some manipulations on the mammal's raw data to create a count of the species by superorder. So I group a lot of suborders together to get only one number for the Afrotheria, that's the purple one in here, because I don't want to show 26 different orders in this donut chart, but combine as much as possible. And the add count with weight species now adds up all the numbers and species based on the superorder. And now the data looks like this. Fewer orders, but more meaningful with summarized species. Now in order to produce the donut chart, you start with a stacked bar chart and you create that with the geomrect function. But in order for that to work, it needs different values of y to know how far the box should extend to the next level. And these values are produced within a mutate to first create fractions. So now I don't want the actual number of species, but only the fraction compared to the total sum, which is around 6,500 species. So now this all adds up to one and then I need the y max, which is the cumulative sum of fraction, and the y min extends from 0 to the top of y max minus 1. So it looks like this, it calculates the fraction, the rodents is the biggest fraction with almost 40%, and then you create a y min that starts at 0 and adds the fraction. So you add this to 0, then you add 0.4 to the previous value, and so on, and that's the minimum value of y, and for y max you of course start at the beginning of the first fraction and then you add the cumulative sum until you make it to 1. So this stacked bar chart that you create with geomrect, you can turn into a circle with the coordinate polar function. And in order to turn it into a donut, you specify the x limb from 0 to 13. So now the 0 value is included. Previously, it went from 6 to 12. Here you can see that for the x value, it goes from 6 to 12. But when you include 0, it still goes from 6 to 12. And then there's a gap between 0 and 6. And the y max is what's stacked on top of each other with the y min and these values come from the mammals data. These columns we created and the x values are fixed. So remember here the x values went from 6 to 12 and with the coordinate polar you turn it into a circle. Now theme legend position equals none gets rid of the legend and theme void makes it cleaner. And then I created a specific coloring vector that picked colors that follow the super order. So similar colors for these two big subgroups. And you can override the colors with the scale fill manual function where the values come from the coloring vector. So now donut looks like this. The images you can get directly from the internet by specifying the URL. So when you go to any website and click on an image, you have to be careful not to put in this URL with the colon, but click on the image one more time to get to the actual upload of the JPEG. And this URL you can read in our studio. So now if I want to load the rodents image, it asks for a path which can be an URL. And if I use the URL for rodents, the image read function from the magic package will turn the URL into an image which is now stored in the rodents object, which you can see here. But now I want to put that into ggplot. And in order to do that, you can use the ggplot function plus background image based on the rodents object. And then you turn the JPEG image into the background of the ggplot. Additionally, I use the ggtitle function 
to give a title to the chart, which is the name of the order plus the number of species and the percentage of the whole. Then with the theme panel border, you can create a rectangle that has no fill, fill equals NA, and size specifies the thickness of the border. And for color, I choose the same color as this area has. And with theme plot title element text, you can use the horizontal adjustment with 0.5 to center it right in the middle of the chart. And I found something really useful. So instead of producing a chart for each of the different order names by simply copy and pasting the code, we can make use of a for loop. And within the for loop, we create temporarily images and then assign them to an object that doesn't exist yet. So let's set i to one, which will be the first in the for loop. It goes from one to seven, which means now the first URL is this one linking to rodents. The first order name will be rodents. And I have an if statement that treats primates and carnivora differently because the chart is bigger and they are supposed to end up on the side like this. I have to stretch them. That's why for these, I don't use the coordinate fix. The coordinate fix I use for the other charts when it's not in primates or carnivora. So now the rodents would activate inside here. After the temp image is created, it's used again to produce a temporary plot with a certain label and with a certain color, all specified above here. And then the assign function pastes the p underscore to the current order name and creates an object p rodentia based on the temporary plot that was created, which means that this is currently in the workspace. And after I run the for loop, you can see that now these seven charts have been created automatically assigning the temporary chart to a new object. Now for the final chart, I create a design which goes over two rows and you can see in the first column, I used one and one and in the last eight and eight, which means that the first chart is going to extend over two rows and the eight chart also will spread the first row and the second. But the donut chart goes in the middle, which means in the design, here's the number five, which means that the fifth chart has to be the donut. So so now you can create the final chart where you put all the different ggplots together and then use patchwork plot layout to use the design. And similarly for patchwork plot annotation, you can add the title, subtitle and captions in the bottom right corner. And one last trick I did for rodents and bats, the Chiroptera, I used the colors that correspond to the donut and the border within the subtitle. And for this to work, you have to state that the theme plot subtitle uses markdown elements that come from the ggtext package. And that means that you can use any HTML code to style your text with a specific color. And then I simply save it as a PDF or PNG with certain dimensions. So once the final chart is created, you can say that you want to have it as a device PNG or Cairo PDF, give the unit in inches 16 to nine or specify the resolution 200 dots per inch. And that's how you create this chart. Of course, it doesn't look so nice in this preview, but when you zoom, you can make it of course any size you want. And similarly, you can save it as PDF from here. So if you like this short form content, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and share it with colleagues or friends. Until next time here at the Data Digest.